from God's word is found in Galatians 5.14. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. What is that? Love your neighbor as yourself. But Jesus, in his final meeting with his disciples before his betrayal and crucifixion, took it up a notch. In John 13, 34, it says, a new command I give you, love one another. Well, that's not that new, but notice what he adds. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Amen. Not just as we love ourselves, but as Christ has demonstrated sacrificial love. He took our sin upon himself. So, a full life also involves listening. So, Carl and gang, the gang quickly run into uh, the major evil threat, which actually was uh, Charles Munz, his hero, which is maybe adds the adage, don't meet your heroes. And uh, in the process, Carl immediately is confronted with the priority. He has to choose between his life, his, his, his wife and the presence of what used to be there in the sense of the house. He has to choose between the house and the bird. Remember the promise he just made to Russell? that he wouldn't leave him behind, guess what? First chance, he leaves Kevin the bird behind. And now Russell feels very discouraged and even disillusioned to the fact that he doesn't want to be a senior wilderness explorer anymore. Here, I don't want to stay anymore. letting go. Carl had done it. He got the house to where he promised he would someday to Ellie, the top of the falls, but it was an empty accomplishment. Why? Because now he's alone. But as he opens up the adventure book, he realized that the adventure continued in Ellie's mind and heart. He didn't think there was anything beyond stuff that I'm going to do because they never made it to the falls together. But what he came to realize was the real adventure was living out his life with her as man and wife, mm -hmm. keeping those vows and continuing that love and enjoying each other. And now she releases him to another adventure. You know, many of us start the Christian walk with a lot of expectations, but when it starts to get hard, we, we sort of lose our motivation. The motivation isn't what God has done, but he, what he wants us to experience in the future. Notice how Paul puts it in his letter to the church of Philippi, in Philippians 3, 12 and 14. It says, not that I've already obtained all this, or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Do you hear those words? Do you see them? Amen. God is holding on to you for a purpose for which he wants you to reach out and move forward in to realize. Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind or letting go and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Pressing forward in this life often means embracing new things, including new and different people to love. And sometimes letting go of old dreams or old experiences that used to fulfill you, but they can't anymore because God has demonstrated he's got better for you. Amen. Sometimes that means letting go of the priorities of past relationships. Jesus did it for us. 
In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, we're told, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, people who lived a life of faith, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Well, how do we do that? Well, in verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, ultimately, a full life involves a Lord and a Savior. And if you've never made it personal and received the provision of forgiveness that Christ can only bring, if you've never gone through what we call the ABCs of salvation, admitting and repenting that you need help, that God is perfect and you're not, and to have that intimate relationship, you need cleaned up, you need forgiveness. Admitting and turning, repenting. And then believing and receiving Jesus as your answer. Knowing that he's God's son. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And then he is committing your life to following him. A full life involves a Lord and Savior. But if you've never done that, then you're never going to experience a full life. You, you might uh, have love. You might experience loss and loneliness and even lift. And you might be a good listener, but not for eternal impact. It takes Jesus for that. Amen. So if you're at that point right now and you know that to be true, I encourage you to invite Christ in. You say, well, I'm not sure what to say. I'll give you some words, but they're not magical. You've got to hold on to them and release them to God. You don't even have to say them out loud. He's reading your thoughts. Direct them to him. And if this prayer represents you, then put it out there and invite Christ into your life. Let's bow our heads. And pray that prayer right now. If you know that you need Christ or maybe want to come back to him, just say something along these words. Heavenly Father, my life is incomplete. You are perfect and holy. And I'm not. I need your son. Dear Jesus, I place my trust in you and who you are and what you did for my forgiveness. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I commit to following you. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen.